But uh, we all know that with a $14 trillion economy, that one of the keys to our economic growth and our ability to compete in the global marketplace is to have affordable, abundant, reliable energy. And obviously, an important part of that is nuclear energy. And uh, being from coal country, I believe that coal is going to continue to play an important role also, uh, despite the challenges that EPA and other government agencies are uh, putting out there for not only coal, but a, a lot of energy producers. Yesterday, I was in New York, and we had the opportunity to visit with a lot of some hedge fund managers and others who were investing other people's money. And we had a, quite a discussion about nuclear energy up there, and they were all talking about how uh, they were really reluctant to invest in nuclear energy right now. The truth of the matter is that uh, natural gas prices are so low, and I guess we're getting ready to start exporting uh, natural gas as well. And so I think the challenge that we have in nuclear, obviously, and I know that you all are focused on new nuclear plants, uh, certainly permitting is a big issue, and it's one that uh, we hope that we can get into on the Energy and Commerce Committee at some point. To be truthful, we've been try reacting to so many things that EPA is doing on their regulations that we haven't really been able to be proactive as much as we want to uh, with the Utility Act and Boiler Act and Cement Act and Air Transport Rules and uh, all of those issues, uh, uh, greenhouse gases and so forth. But uh, we do talk a lot about ways to uh, try to streamline the permitting process. And I know that there are many people in the nuclear industry that are looking at uh, smaller nuclear plants, uh, sometimes referred to as modulars, which may or may not be an accurate description, but certainly smaller nuclear plants. There seems to be uh, I have groups coming in to see me almost uh, every week, it seems, that want to uh, try to uh, start uh, citing those plans. And of course, a, 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 a very important role uh, for the government continues to be these loan guarantees, uh, to, because these nuclear plants are so expensive as are any utility plant. And uh, one of the problems, it's my understanding, that OMB and others uh, because of the risk, the interest rates that they're charging on the loan guarantees is also uh, creating uh, problems for uh, adequate financing uh, in addition to all of the other obstacles uh, that, you, that you face out there. And then unfortunately, uh, we have this situation over at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission where the chairman is becoming quite controversial. And uh, that's really a shame because there are so many issues facing the nuclear industry today that we really don't want to need to be distracted by that. And so, as you know, the re recent Inspector General's report uh, basically said that Chairman Jasko was, uh, according to their interviews, that he was a manipul manipulative, he withheld information, he acted unilaterally. And uh, so we know that the atmosphere over there among the commissioners is not, not all that uh, um, ingratiating right now. So uh, I think it's important that that issue be resolved because, uh, and particularly when he's been so involved in, in uh, stopping this Yucca Mountain. And just from a taxpayer's perspective, as you know, when you've already spent uh, 10 or 12 billion on Yucca Mountain, and then you've got the lawsuits out there with judgments in, the, in that regard, and then you've got these utility, nuclear utility plants, 104 around the country, still have this material, and how are we going to get rid of it? That I mean that has to be an important issue if we're going to expand our nuclear capability in America. And that's something that I certainly want to do. Uh, I personally think that the Obama administration is overplaying the role that so-called green energy can play. Now, if, if we included nuclear and green energy, which in a lot of the renewable standards, nuclear is not a part of it, but uh, I, I really think it should be because it is a clean, a clean uh, way to produce electricity. Uh, but uh, so 
the Obama administration, as you know, through their stimulus plans and others, have put so much money out there in various green projects, and I'm aware of many of them, uh, that received uh, several millions of dollars in California alone, and they're already in bankruptcy. And when President Obama says that by 2035, he wants to reduce overall emissions in the United States by 85 percent, that's a laudable goal, but I, I don't think that's possible to, to accomplish. Because when you just hear that number in the abstract, uh, it's a lot, we know that, and you can say, well, I don't think that can be done. But when you really look at the numbers, what we're talking about here, that takes you back to 1921 in America. And in 1921, only 2% of the American households in rural areas had electricity. 50% of households in urban areas had electricity. We didn't have any computers. We didn't have any laptops. Uh, we didn't have all of the iPods and everything else that uses so much electricity today. So trying to reduce emissions by that much, uh, I don't really think it's possible. And Scott Montgomery recently wrote a book uh, entitled The Powers That Be. And in his book, he, he did a pretty thorough job of looking at all areas of energy, but he did point out that he thought it was an uh, unrealistic sort of a fantasy world to expect that renewables, if we mean wind power and solar power, are going to have any major impact on producing electricity in America. And particularly when by 2035 we expect uh, energy, uh, electricity demand to increase by 35% or so, uh, we're, we're going to have to have everything available uh, to produce this amount of electricity. And we're going to have to have coal, and uh, I think it's a mistake for this administration to be so anti-coal to try to put a lot of these plants out of business. We need to be more supportive of nuclear. We need to support natural gas. We, we, we all have heard the phrase, all of the above. And uh, we need all of the above if we are going to have a strong economy, creating jobs, and competing in the global marketplace. So uh, our objective.